introduce yourself to us. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you, Joy. Um, fellow Oyekunle, and I'm a Commonwealth Scholar, University of Leeds. I just um, finished with my master's in environmental engineering at University of Leeds, and um, I guess I'm planning to also return home. <laughs> so that's just a brief. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ife, please, we would love to know the school you finished from, your alma mater in Nigeria, again yeah, before you proceeded to Leeds. It's all right. I finished from FUTA, and um, FUTA is the Federal University of Technology in Akure, from the States. So I finished from um, chemistry department. That was in 2018. You know, I um, uploaded a video on YouTube sometimes last week saying that I will share some scholarship tips. So. I found it fit to maybe contact one scholar. I know that you're a scholar of Commonwealth Shared. So people got to drop some questions. So I would be asking you some questions and you'll be giving us feedback and tips on how to go about it. Okay. Is that okay by you? That's very okay. Very okay by me. I'm very okay with that. All right. All right. Thank you. So tell us about Commonwealth in general. Okay, yeah, uh, so the Commonwealth Scholarship is mainly about, so they want to help those who are financially incapacitated, and but also they can excel academically without on anything, but that's just the overview of everything. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay for now. So I have another question here. What does Commonwealth Scholarship involve? I think the person here means what's in for commonwealth scholarship i think the person is trying to say what is it called covering undergraduate phd or just masters i guess that's what the question is talking about okay yeah to answer that the commonwealth scholarship we have 18 in segments if i should say so we have the commonwealth shared scholarship we have the commonwealth master scholarship and then we also have um, the commonwealth phd scholarship for the low and middle income countries. We also have the PhD scholarship for the high income looking forward to doing a PhD also. You can also apply for the Commonwealth, but it's a different one. Still the same Commonwealth, funded by the same body, but the master's is different from the PhD scholarship. So we have the Commonwealth master scholarship. We have the Commonwealth shared scholarship, which is also for master's. And we have the Commonwealth PhD scholarship. Another question I have here is what are the requirements or eligibility criteria for applying for the Commonwealth shared? I guess this for master. The living in a Commonwealth country, that's one, which is very important that you are living in a Commonwealth country. And also, they would love um, those who have a minimum of 2-1, I would say. So if you have a minimum of 2-1 or you have a first class and in some instances, uh, if you have a master's and you probably have a 2-1 or a 2-2, two -two, that could help solidify your, your application package. So but so they, they put it there, like the clause is there that if you're in the UK, Generally, they wouldn't fund that, except you can give a valid case for you wanting to do a second master's in the UK and why you want them to fund it. So, those are the two most important ones. Much, Mr. Ife. Okay, you've answered the question because someone um, wrote here, must one be a first class scholar? But I guess from your explanation, it's clear that. Um, a two one can apply, a first class also can apply. So does it mean that if someone has a two two, the person don't have any chances on Commonwealth, despite um, what the person has to offer or what the person plans to do in future? It's really say, and um, just to make it um, also like just to serve as a disclaimer, also everything I say is just um, is just according to me. That's according to. <laughs> <laughs> to come over, so like just a disclaimer. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, in this case, I would say that first class and two one graduate, and with 
if it's someone has a master's, then that, that's very possible. So he felt like I have a lot of T1. I know a lot of T1 graduates that have won this Commonwealth scholarship, even without the master's and everything. So, but if it's two to graduate as a master's and there is really a very good grade for the master's, so I believe there is no harm in trying. So Thank you for that, Mr. Ife. So guys, you've heard him. Um, you need to put more effort if you're still an undergraduate. Another question. Do your university affect you? I think what this person may hear is, do they accept private university, state or federal university, and polytechnic actually? Okay, um, there is really no discrimination against the type of university you attended as an undergraduate. So those who finish from private universities, from federal universities and from state universities, can apply for the Commonwealth Scholarship and, of course, uh, finished from private schools and will got the Commonwealth Scholarship. Uh, but then, since the Commonwealth is, is for a master's in the UK, so, and most schools in the UK don't really want to make a transition from, from HND, I don't know, like from, a, from, from a, an ND or HND to a master's. So, I've I've not really left me. I've not seen someone who finished from a polytechnic without actually going to university, getting the Commonwealth scholarship. So because it's mainly channeled to those who finish with a B, BAC or BTEC or BA or whichever it is. So see, but looking at polytechnics, I've not really heard of any case for UK schools and um, for Commonwealth scholarship. Please, do I need English? Proficiency test to apply for Commonwealth. Okay, uh, concerning proficiency tests, the likes of IOTLs and the uh, Helen Hall, some schools in the UK actually waive these for students from from Nigeria or from for some Commonwealth countries. So okay. some schools accept some schools SSE. So some would uh, specify that if you have a minimum of C4, C5, or C6 in English, that uh, they will waive that for you. Also, some also accept the proficiency letter, which is given by, by the senates of the school that one graduates from. So, and um, that is another option. And some schools probably give it to the, from the department. So the letter will just throughout your stay or throughout the period of the university, you know, the medium of communication and of instruction was in English. So that would satisfy that you can actually communicate in English and that would be good for you. But even at that, some schools wouldn't waive this. So one really has to check with schools that would waive this for one. So not all schools waive this English exam for everyone. Okay, thank you very much for this. Pay any money to apply for Commonwealth Shared? For the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, well, it depends. One can get to pay, and one might probably not get to pay. Paying in the sense like this now, now, how does one get to pay? It's only if you're paying for your passport. So not that you are paying the scholarship or the your body for you. Like the onus is on you to like to get your passport, pay for that yourself. So unlike some, um, so like you have to pay for your passport. And if you are also applying to schools, whereby you have to pay application fee, the scholarship might not cover that for you. So you have to get the admission from the school. So you have to pay the application fee yourself. So in those um, instances. You are getting to pay yourself, so you have to cover the cost. Question here. <laughs> the person says, must I return immediately? <laughs> I think the person wants to run away from Nigeria. <laughs> must I return immediately? <laughs> so well, please um, help the person with that. There have been a lot of um, questions um, concerning can I, should I return immediately? Can I still? The Commonwealth Act uh, has a clause, which is that, you know, the, the, the purpose of one on the 
The reason why they're funding us to come to the UK to study for our master's stats, we return home to develop our own country. That's one. That's the major, like one of their major reasons, actually. But on getting to the UK, and after one finishes his or master's, um, the Commonwealth will always remind you about that. And in fact, your school will remind you about that. So, <laughs> but there is um, an exception to that. So if you get a PhD offer while studying in the UK for your master's, then the Commonwealth will issue a no objection letter to one. So for that, a permission to stay for your PhD. They will expect that after your PhD also, you should return home. So, except. I think I'll stop here for the questions today. So tell us, how has been your experience so far in the UK? Is it better than 19 years? Of course it's better. <laughs> well, just tell us your experience. The experience has really been, it's really been an awesome time being in the UK for the past one year and all. So I would say I've really had uh, the best of moments. I've, created a lot of beautiful memories and all and it tried to disturb some things you know trying to transit from offline lectures to going online lectures via teams and everything so that was a time that everyone had to just adapt to it but despite that um, things still went well and everything still proceeded as it used to so I would say I've really had the best of time. My one year in UK has really exposed one, like me personally to a lot of things. So I've learned a lot of things in my one year in the UK and I can only be thankful to the Commonwealth Scholarship for me to be in the UK. You've heard what he said. Commonwealth Scholarship are basically from people that are citizens or residents in the Commonwealth country. And you may need an English proficiency test, depending on the school you are applying for. And also, you don't need to pay any money except it involves application fee or something like that. And another thing again, he said you can apply with a 2-1 or a first class. That doesn't mean that as a 2-2 student, you cannot try your luck. Who knows, your grades might differ. So, and another thing he said again was, you must return back to your country. Yes, you had me. Return back to your country. I can't go all out. I don't really Nigerians want to go there and stay there forever. The only chance you would get to stay there is if you could acquire a PhD position before the end of your master's scholarship over there. So if you really want to stay in the UK, you must double your hustle. You must keep applying for schools so that you will keep staying there till you till you're able to stay in the UK because one of us want to that us um, training you to be a better leader and a better person for your country. So, and if had what he said, his experience there is superb. I can imagine myself being in the UK right now. Oh good. <laughs> Don't worry, we talk from your grace, Mr. Ife. So thank you for your time. We'll be connecting to you again for any further questions we have. Hope you don't mind. Not at all, not at all, not at all. I don't mind at all. <laughs> So okay, it's, it's thank you. You know, I got to learn of some things today, you know. I actually was among those that was standing on staying in the UK, you know. <laughs> but I got to learn today that I need to acquire, um, have a PhD position first. So thank you so much for mm. that. Thank you so much. And also, I was thinking that universities do affect. But for a polytechnic holder, um, for this um, HND or ND, I would advise you to proceed to a university to at least attain a BTEC or BSc or whatever to be eligible for the Commonwealth Scholarship. So, Mr. Ife, enjoy your time over there. Enjoy the weather, enjoy the beautiful cities, yeah. and enjoy everything. We hope to see you soon in Nigeria. Thank you. Hope you are coming back to us. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you hopefully, said hopefully. So. Yeah, plan of staying. No, well, I hopefully could mean soon. So, I'm saying hopefully soon I would I will be back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Soon maybe that's 10 years, 50 years, but no problem. Thank you oh, for yeah. having us. Thank you so much. Yeah, all right.